In stage one, we bring as much integrity as possible to our current systems. If we cut the U.S. military budget in half, it would still roughly equal the defense spending of the entire rest of the world. Between that and getting rid of the Federal Reserve, over a trillion dollars a year would be freed, enough to feed everyone on our planet, deal with social issues, and heal our environment. Many people believe that widespread starvation and poverty are inevitable, but compared to war, eliminating poverty and restoring the environment are cheap. According to Lester Brown's Earth Policy Institute, it would take under $200 billion a year to restore the Earth's environment and meet global social goals. But this stage isn't the end goal of the Liberty Perspective. While stage one has a lot of the compassion typically associated with a liberal Democrat agenda, stage two reflects much of the wisdom of the traditional conservative worldview. In stage two, we shrink government's role to protecting individual liberty and stewarding things we share in common, like ecosystems and the airwaves we use to communicate. As the system gains integrity and we move to sound currency, people will have enough money to have more control over everything that affects them. Stage three grows out of the increasing freedom that people gain in stages one and two as they have more money and more time. There is no involuntary tax and therefore no involuntary governance. There's no monopoly on force. There are rules, but no rulers. Rigorously protecting individual rights turns out to be key for honoring our interdependence. We can be distinct and unified at the same time. As utopian as this can sound at first, I've been thrilled to see how much practical thinking has been done to deal with tough issues like health care, crime, and education. These three stages validate the best of both the liberal and conservative perspectives that have divided us for so long, and then reconcile them at a new level around non-violation, a core ethic we all share. Stage three honors human incentive and finally includes the rights of not just many, not just most, but everyone. The Taurus provides a template for a society based on integrity and wholeness. It conserves what's working. It has built-in feedback so it can self-correct and innovate to maintain balance. We can apply these and other features of the Taurus dynamic to our human social systems. I truly believe that aligning consciously with the fundamental life energy pattern at every level, physical, emotional, mental, interpersonal, and environmental, is ultimately the art, the science, and the celebration of love. And that's what we're here to learn. The fundamental insight of our interconnectedness changed the way I approach everything. In my own life, I found a practical expression of this philosophy in the modern nonviolent martial art of Aikido. It offers powerful guidance on how to respond effectively and non-aggressively to the global domination agenda. Morihei Uyeshiba, its founder, taught that to practice Aikido, one must mimic the movements of atoms and galaxies. Just as free energy technology blends with the toroidal pattern to access unlimited power, Aikido, the way of harmony, blends with the energy of an attacker. redirecting it to peaceful resolution. Gandhi and King applied these principles of non-aggressive power at the economic and social levels. If we respond with violence to the domination agenda, other than in self-defense, it would only continue the old us versus them paradigm and provide an excuse for even more police state measures. I believe that it's essential, both morally and strategically, that we take the path of non-aggression. 
There is another aspect of the Taurus that has profound implications for how we can respond to the challenges before us. It is the absolute stillness, the zero point, that lies at the center of each toroidal system. I believe that you and I, as well as every other being, are Taurus energy fields, centered by stillness and each connected to one another and to the boundless consciousness of a living universe. As much as I benefit from the experience of others, as highlighted here with the Navigating Insights, and as valuable as daily feedback is about what's really going on in the world, as we see with the vitals, I've come to recognize that our primary compass is our own inner guidance. As we learn to quiet the noise and amplify the inner signal, we can better hear the voice that naturally knows and offers wise direction. We have a, an entire inner life, a vibrant and lively inner life that is truly the navigator of the path that we take on the outside. If your inner life is the driver of how you show up in the world, it makes sense that if you want to have anything to do with where you're going, that you have to be in relationship to that inner life. You have to be in relationship to the driver as we develop increased relationship to who's in the driver's seat, what happens is the, there is a synergy. It's a symbiotic relationship that our inner lives are actually able to be more in tandem with where we're choosing to go, and we're able to get there. We're not nearly as insignificant in our impact as we think we are. In order to heal the world, we have to start telling a different story to ourselves. We have to start engaging in a different story with others. It's our collective story that manifests as the world. Humanity is now in a very interesting evolutionary phase in which we move from hostile, aggressive competition, which is the nature of young species, into a more mature mode of cooperation, collaboration. There's no question in this country that money, that capital, is being increasingly concentrated in the hands of a few. And uh, those who are so powerful are concentrating it further, but there is a force that's more powerful, and that's the power of the people. When we look at the crises now, it is so easy to fall out of love with life. It is so easy to get pessimistic and desperate. But from my perspective, the crisis has matured to the point of being on the threshold of mass awakening. And that, that feeling inside me gives me the vitality to know that you no know, matter how small what I'm doing looks to me in the face of these huge problems, that the impulse of evolution is not small. And when it's in everybody who's waking up, it's huge. And as more and more of us are waking up, linking up, and daring to speak up, the scheme for global domination is being exposed. And we're discovering solutions that can create the world we yearn for and deserve. Again and again throughout history, when people have recognized tyranny rearing its cruel head, they've come together and stood up for liberty. I am confident humankind will look back on this period and be proud that when we saw, we acted. Thank you for coming on this journey with us. I'm convinced we have what it takes to thrive. Let's make it happen.
carried by the current till we stand side by side on the brink of a brand new dawn. We come together while the waters rise. There's a stirring deep inside, deep inside. We come together to stand up for our lives. Does it take to thrive while we've been sleeping? Our hearts were beating so much closer than we ever knew. Beneath the noise, there is an inner voice whispering, clear and true. The veils are finally lifted, our ways becoming clear. A dream without a limit and a vision so strong. Every person knows they belong. Come together while the waters rise. Let us stir deep inside. Deep inside. We come together to stand up for our lives. What on earth does it take to fly? takes to thrive. We come together while the waters rise. There's a stirring deep inside. Deep inside. We come together to stand up for our life. We all have what it takes to thrive. We come together while the waters rise. There's a stirring What it takes.